Back in the late 90s, I purchased a Glock 27 and 40 caliber. This is a subcompact version. It's the one that has a little bit of a grip extension also, so it's really easy to get a good purchase on the firearm itself as far as it being a smaller firearm. It leaves off the, the part where your pinky would actually grab hold of it. But again, I liked it because it was very concealable. It was a, a, a good firearm to be wearing under your clothes. About seven years ago, when my seven-year-old son was born, on the exact same day, my firearm was in my truck parked out in front of the Women's and Children's Hospital in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Two dirt bags. I saw these guys before they broke into my vehicle and didn't realize what, that they were casing the cars in the parking lot. They broke into my truck, busted the window, and stole my Glock 27. Now, I can tell you that anybody out there who's had a firearm stolen from you, it's really tough to replace that firearm with the exact same firearm. It brings a bad taste in your mouth and you feel like you're paying twice for the same gun because you only have one gun, the other one's ripped off. I put off buying a Glock 27 for a very, very, very long time. Again, it left a bad taste in my mouth. Who, who steals and, and robs from the Women's and Children's Hospital where you know children are being born? Anyway, I digress. Fast forward to today. Last year, I noticed a company who had been putting out a lot of firearms and a lot of aftermarket work being done on Glocks, Zevtech. Really cool products. They do a lot of barrel work, slide work, trigger work. Uh, they, they release some of their own firearms that are completely uh, remodified, or modified, I should say, and very nice firearms, uh, or you can buy the parts and mod your own. Um, I got the Glock 27 of all firearms in 40 caliber, and uh, I got to tell you, I'm pleasantly surprised. This is a pretty nice firearm. The Glock 27 modified by Zev Technologies. This is a nice piece. The first thing you notice is the slide. This is definitely not your standard Glock slide. This thing is proprietary by Zev and has its own unique look and a little bit of grip, I might add. The second thing you will notice is the red trigger. This is a V2 ZT fulcrum trigger. This is a pre-adjusted trigger. You can readjust this thing, but it is pre-adjusted from the factory, and I, I tended to like the way it felt as it came out of the box. More on this trigger later. Another noticeable addition, the stippling. Very aggressive stippling all the way around this grip. Very nice, great feel, kind of aggressive as far as if you're carrying it. It does rub against your side, but you can soften that up a little bit with a file or something like that. Now, one of the knocks against a 40 caliber in, say, a polymer type gun, for instance, is the fact that the lightness and the smallness uh, and the weight of the frame and the slide combination makes for a, a little bit of an odd torque. You, uh, your recoil is not standard. It's not just like a soft pop of a 45 caliber or a 9 millimeter, for that instance. Um, you have a really weird kind of torque, uh, and your frame flexes, and you see some oddball things that you don't see in a normal round because this is a pretty violent round. Uh, for a gun of this size especially. Now with that being said, I like the fact that the stippling on this firearm really allows you to manage and control that recoil and not have that that, that torquing of the recoil take control of your, your next shot, your follow-up shot. That stippling really allows you, and I know that stippling is there for wet hands, sweaty hands, or gloves, but to me, in this, especially in this 40 caliber round, it allows you to control and maintain your standard grip on that firearm without that torque throwing you way off of your target as far as your secondary or your follow-up shot. Take a look here and see if you can see. I'm going to try to do some double taps so you can see that my follow-up shot, it's not, I'm not having a hard time getting back on target and I'm able to maintain my side acquisition. Another thing I like about the stippling is the fact that if you're just shooting with your strong hand and your weak hand is preoccupied, uh, injured or anything like that, if you're fighting off, somebody's attacking you, this gives you the opportunity again with that stippling to get a really nice, strong, and firm grip on that firearm without worrying about it torquing out of your hand, falling out of your hand, or anything like that. And that trigger, that's something else that I've come to really like on this Zevtech 27. This thing is really nice as far as that trigger. The reset is very deliberate. Uh, you, there's, there's no guesswork involved as far as when it's going to reset. Your take up to me, your take up is expected the length that it should be. You don't feel like you have a huge amount of take up. It doesn't have a spongy feel to it like most of your polymer style triggers do. Uh, this is an impressive trigger. I really like this type of trigger they put on here. It, to me, it gives it uh, the kind of reliability that you tend to kind of lack in an off the shelf Glock. I felt like the trigger pull was very light, but if you notice the way I have to actually test it, I'm pulling more down and back. So I'm getting four pounds and change. Um, it's because of the trigger safety. Instead of being able to pull straight back, I'm actually having to pull a little bit down. 
So it's given me a consistent four pounds, so many ounces. Um, so it's this isn't a good representation of what the trigger pull should be. However, it gets you close. You see that I do have at least better than a four pound trigger pull. And the sights, what can you say about these sights? I'm a big fan of fiber optics. I like the fact that when you stick it out there and you're looking for your sight picture, you're trying to acquire your sight picture rather, that red is going to pop up. It jumps up at you. That fiber optic is not something you're going to have to search for. It's not going to get lost amongst back sights either. Of course, the back of this sight is all black. They don't even have the white on the back of this. But I like that because obviously you're supposed to be focusing on those front sights anyway. So this gives me the opportunity that as soon as I put this firearm out there, all I'm looking at and all that gets my attention is that bright fiber optic front sight and that's what I want to see. In many instances, a self-defense firearm is not exactly geared for precision shooting, but it would be nice to hit what you're shooting at, right? We're talking about a three and a half inch barrel here. Let's see what kind of accuracy we get at five yards, maybe six yards tops. While luck makes its way into my shooting every now and then, I gotta say this pistol itself was doing exactly what I needed it to. Everything, and I mean everything, was within a dead zone. Well, as you can see, accuracy at five yards, not a big deal. Remember, I'm on the other end of this thing, so it's not the greatest shots in the world. My first shot actually touched the bullseye. Of course, you see I've got some out here that are off to the side. That's me, that's, a, that's an operator error. This thing here, actually the trigger broke so crisp and so quickly that it, it's not going to allow you to anticipate that shot and actually get that, that, that jerk where you're leaning down to anticipate that shot. This is actually a trigger that's going to allow you to make a more accurate shot because it breaks when it's supposed to and uh, actually a little bit quicker than you think it would. So as long as you've got your right sight picture, you're going to get that thing real close to where you want it to be. You know, it took me eight years to trust a Glock 27 again. My baby boy, my little gangster is gonna be eight years old next month. And I'm glad I waited the eight years because I don't think I would have been satisfied diving right back to another Glock 27, again, with that bitter, bad taste in my mouth about being robbed by a bunch of scumbag thugs. However, I'm glad that I ran across the Glock 27 made by Zeptec, or modified by Zeptec, I should say. These guys put us out some really cool products. There's a lot of guys out there doing some really cool stuff to Glocks. Agency Arms is one of them. They make some wonderful firearms. But all these guys are putting out some good products. A lot of good barrel work, a lot of good slide work, great triggers that they're putting in these things. You can also buy components from all these types of manufacturers and, uh, and, and distributors also. So you wanna, you wanna check out these guys. Check out Zevtech. Again, check out Agency Arms. I got some friends over there that work there as well. Put out some wonderful firearms. These two guys are leading the pack as far as modifications on Glocks. And I, I definitely trust um, at least my hand on one of these being that little bit somewhat violent uh, 40 caliber round in a smaller, lighter polymer firearm. The stippling and everything else they do these firearms make it a joy to shoot. Definitely, definitely, definitely not your run-of-the-mill off-the-shelf Glock. Check them out.